Boruto Uzumaki, the most misunderstood character I have ever seen. From the endless hate tweets to YouTube videos racking up millions of views, Boruto's character has been slandered so much that he is viewed completely different to what he is now. After reading the Naruto series and spending over 700 chapters with the previous main character, Naruto, it was time for his son to take over. However, what has transpired from the beginning of the series that started in 2015 with the Boruto movie has created a perception of Boruto's character that hasn't changed ever since. Boruto hates his dad. Boruto is a brat. Boruto is a Naruto clone. Boruto eats burgers. Whatever people said about Boruto's character is still being said today, which has created many misconceptions about his character. So let's talk about Boruto's origin. Boruto Uzumaki made his first appearance in the final chapter of the Naruto manga in 2014 as the son of Naruto Uzumaki and Hinata Hyuga. We found out that Boruto's name is translated to the word bolt in Japanese, which is a reference to his late uncle Neji, whose name translates to screw, and also references to one of Boruto's chakra affinities, which is lightning. Boruto immediately makes a statement that he hates the Hokages and disregards being a shinobi, as he painted the Hokage Mountain with names, a callback to when Naruto painted the Hokage Mountain in the first page the Naruto manga. Boruto had a brat-like nature just like his father did, but Naruto was acting up to get people's attention since he was the outcast of the village, while Boruto was acting up to get his father's attention. It's the complete opposite of what Naruto went through as a child. Naruto growing up didn't have his parents, friends, and was treated as a monster by the citizens of Konoha. It was only by Naruto fighting for what he wanted that he was able to gain the recognition of the Leaf Village and gained many friends along the way. Whereas Boruto had absolutely everything. He had a family, friends, and was recognized as the Hokage's son, so many people placed great expectations on him to live up to his father's name. However, it was clear that Boruto didn't care about any of that as he just wanted the recognition of his father, which he often moats about in the beginning of the series. You see, Boruto is incredibly ignorant to what's going on around the shinobi world, which is what made him somewhat of a dislikable character at the beginning of the series. After spending so many years watching Naruto chasing and attaining his goal of becoming Hokage, his child aspired to be something else. Something that has nothing to do with being Hokage. This is where Boruto suffers from having an identity crisis where he goes through a period of uncertainty and confusion about who he is as a person which made him resent his father's role of being Hokage. That's why Boruto explains that his story begins when he was a brat who sulked about his dad not paying enough attention to him. He explains that this is his story and his story isn't about a boy who aims to become Hokage. Since that was was Naruto's story, which was shown in the past. Boruto is the Hokage's son. He can't help that Naruto ends up being involved in the story since Naruto does play a massive role, where he and Boruto will share the story together at the start. From not giving a damn about being a shinobi, it looks like Boruto will never ever embrace the role that his father always strived for. I'm still a shinobi. Boruto tells his brother Kawaki as he powers up in his karma form in a destroyed hidden leaf village. So what changed? What made Boruto go from a brat resenting the Hokage role and rejecting the ninja way to embracing it during his teen years when the world is on the brink of collapse? From living a great life to losing absolutely everything from your family, home, and your entire identity, what exactly did Boruto go through in order to turn out like this? From having a brat-like behavior to following his father's legacy of being a great shinobi, Boruto undergoes an incredible change that not many people are talking about. The Boruto movie covers the first arc of the series, which is the Chunin exams, where many people's gripes and dislike of Boruto's character comes from. And if I'm being honest with you, some of it is understandable. Boruto in the beginning arc tends to downplay the use of being a shinobi and the ninja way, by constantly disregarding Naruto every time they spoke. From calling Naruto dad instead of Lord Okage, and ignoring the principles of shinobi such as teamwork and guts, Boruto already has 
has some tension that has been built up when it comes to his relationship with his father. Having the guts to keep going and working hard to achieve what you want as a shinobi was a common theme that was pushed for Naruto's character. And while it isn't the main theme in his story arc, it was the one thing that kept Naruto going as a kid since he wasn't the smartest kid in the world and failed the academy three times. Whereas with Boruto, he was a prodigy who passed the academy with the perfect score, with his grandfather Minato being the only other student to ever accomplish this feat at such a young age. And unlike Naruto who constantly struggled to do even the most basic shinobi tasks such as clone jutsu, Boruto was capable of doing some of the most incredible things ever at such a young age. In fact, by the time he was a Geni, Boruto had the ability to do shadow clone jutsu while having three different chakra natures all without any training. During the graduation exam where Boruto's class had to achieve a bell from Kakashi, the former 6 Hokage himself even stated that Boruto was at the level of a Chunin while all being an academy student at this time. Even though this is insane to hear, Boruto being this powerful is not that surprising considering where he came from. Boruto is the son of Naruto Uzumaki, the 7th Hokage, and the greatest ninja ever. The grandson of Minato Namakaze, the 4th Hokage, and his grandmother Kushino Uzumaki, who is the former Ninetales Jinchuriki. His mother Hinata is the Hyuga clan princess, and his other grandfather is the Hyuga clan leader. Boruto has Uzumaki, Hyuga, and Namikaze genetics coursing through his veins, all while harboring the Jogan, which has the potential to be the most busted dojutsu in the entire Naruto franchise. Basically, Boruto Uzumaki is a genetic monster, having the combined genetics of some of the most prestigious clans in the verse, all while being the son of the greatest ninja to ever live, it makes sense why Boruto is that strong to begin with. Characters like Madara and Orochimaru have experimented on their bodies to become the perfect human in order to achieve their own goals. Meanwhile, through the combination of DNA and genetic makeup, the ultimate prodigy was born. Even when it comes to other prodigies such as Itachi, Sasuke, Minato, and Kakashi, Boruto is as big as a prodigy you can get, especially with some of the feats that he was able to accomplish later on in the series. But due to being this talented, Boruto being a prodigy was the one thing that deterred him since he often took the easy way out to accomplish things, especially in the tuning exams. Before we go into the main arc of the series, which is the tuning exams, I think it's a important to highlight the severity of the relationship between Boruto and Naruto since it plays such a huge part in the following arc. This was apparent in the first few episodes of the Boruto anime as we realized Boruto wasn't very fond of Naruto being the Hokage of the village. He was very angsty and became annoyed every time he saw his father knowing that he doesn't have time to spend with him since Naruto has to be Hokage where he often stays late just to get work done. And what makes it worse is that the few times Boruto saw Naruto during the day is when Boruto would act up or lash out just because he wanted the attention and approval of his father. This is the main reason why Boruto is so brat-like toward his father as this puts a strain on their relationship in the beginning of the series, which made it hard for either of the two to even communicate with each other. For example, when Boruto started to awaken his Jogan briefly in the academy arc, he told Naruto that he thought he awakened his Byakugan. And while it isn't the Byakugan of course, Naruto didn't believe his son and suspected him of lying, which did irk Boruto, which is one of the few times that he was sincere sincere toward his own father. Another example is when Mitsuki came over to have dinner with Boruto's family and Naruto decided to stop by and eat with them, something that he doesn't usually do since he's so busy at the office. However, Naruto had to leave early since there was trouble brewing within the village, which pissed Boruto off since he just wanted to have his family together. What Boruto doesn't understand yet is that Naruto views everyone in the village as his family, something that Boruto takes for granted since he doesn't truly understand what it means to be a shinobi. This leads all into the Chunin exams arc which is the first arc of the manga, as Boruto didn't even want to take the exams in the first place since he was barely interested in becoming a shinobi. Even though it is optional to become a shinobi in this new era, Boruto still must follow protocol of the shinobi way since that is what's taught from every generation passed down. As Boruto and Naruto bicker about being a shinobi, Boruto reminds Naruto that today is a very important day for a dad, and that it is the birthday of Himawari Uzumaki, Boruto's younger sister. And even though Naruto is absent from Boruto's presence due to his Hokage duties, Boruto made his father promise that he will show up for him Himawari's birthday, which Boruto does take very seriously since he understands that Naruto doesn't give him much attention to him. As Boruto leaves the Hokage office, he tells his dad that this isn't the lame era that Naruto grew up in, implying that Boruto's era is living a much better life, which is true, but that's thanks to the work that Naruto and his generation put in to make the next generation live an easier life. The ignorance from Boruto is shown here, as he does not know what it takes to be a shinobi, even though he's incredibly 
extremely talented and doesn't know what his father went through when Naruto was a kid. It's not particularly Boruto's fault that he doesn't know Naruto's past since nobody told him, unlike us the audience who witnessed Naruto's entire story, but the main theme and dilemma Boruto undergoes at the beginning of his character arc is ignorance and his ability to take shortcuts. As mentioned before with Boruto ignoring the struggles and dedication a shinobi must go through, Boruto disregards the principles of it and it shows even when it comes to other outside factors than just being a shinobi. It's only shown briefly but parallels are drawn to Boruto's ignorance of taking shortcuts such as with Katasuke giving Boruto a new video game with all of the mods on it. As we see later in the chapter when Boruto is gaming with Shikadai and Inojin while hanging out, Inojin gets stuck on a boss where instead of trying to dedicate time to beat the boss using efforts, Boruto gives Inojin a mod to win easily. Shikadai witnesses this and says that playing these video games are only fun when slowly grinding levels in order to play the game fairly, which is why he leaves. If you play any type of video game that requires a character to grind levels, such as Pokemon or Elden Ring, the joy of grinding levels makes the experience of playing a video game much more enjoyable, which in turn becomes an adventure. Imagine playing Pokemon and having all of your Pokemon at level 99 right away. It would ruin the experience and the fun of the game since it would become too easy at that point. That's why Shikamaru leaves immediately once he realizes that Boruto and Inojin were cheating when playing their video games, ruining the fun of playing it. And while it may not mean much in the grand essence of things, this is just a small indication of how Boruto likes to take the easy way out during the beginning of the series. After being pressured by Sarada and Miski to take the tuning exams, Boruto realizes that this will be a good way to get recognition from his father if he does well, something that Boruto has long wanted from Naruto. Once Boruto gets home, Naruto greets him at the door, looking like he's followed up on his promise that he's made to Boruto. Boruto is incredibly happy that his father is home, and being there for his family, since that's what a kid wants from his parents after all. As Naruto is preparing Himawari's cake, Naruto's shadow clone dispels, revealing that he sent a shadow clone to go home to his family. This enrages Boruto since Naruto basically broke the promise that he made to him. Hinata tries to reason with Boruto, saying that Naruto works incredibly hard every day, just to make sure that everyone in the village stays safe which includes his own kids. However, Boruto refuses to listen since he doesn't understand the role of the Hokage, as he even questions why Naruto is the Hokage in the first place, saying that all Naruto does is sit at his desk and act important, which is something anyone can do. Obviously, this isn't true, but the frustration from Boruto makes sense, since he never got the attention from his father that he longed for, which is why he's even taking the tuning exams in the first place. He asks why the children of the Hokage are expected to be grateful for being born into a situation like this, where they don't even get to see their parents. This is where many people start to harp on Boruto's character since it does come off as ungrateful. This is where both Boruto and Naruto begin to have a misunderstanding between each other. While it does come off as insensitive for Boruto to disrespect the Hokage role, since he has no idea how the Hokage position works in the first place, Naruto prioritizes his role of being a Hokage over being a father, which is why Boruto lashes out. This is where a lot of people tend to blame Boruto for Naruto's incompetence of being a present father, which is where all of Boruto's problems with the Hokage stem from. The kid just wants his dad home for his sister's birthday. That's all he asked for and with Naruto failing to fulfill Boruto's promise that he made to him, which Boruto even warned Naruto that he will be upset if he didn't show up, I think it's understandable why Boruto acted that way. And I know a lot of people are going to say, but Naruto is Okage, Boruto should understand that Naruto won't be there. But Boruto doesn't understand since, well, he's hard-headed just like his father. Just like Boruto, Naruto was even more of a hard-headed brat growing up and often would lash out for other people's attention. A personality trait that was passed down from Naruto to Boruto, where both characters had to go through trouble in order to learn about the shinobi world. While Boruto questions why Naruto is Okage in the first place, Hinata explains the purpose of Okage and how critical the role is to the village. But Boruto has none of it since he doesn't see Naruto as the Okage, he sees Naruto as his father. When I first watched this scene in the Boruto movie, I found Boruto to be irrational since he was disregarding the Hokage role his father played. But I understood his frustration since he is a kid, unlike the era that Naruto grew up in which was war riddled and had tons of conflicts among many villages, the era that Boruto grew up in was peaceful where many people lived a normal life that was free of conflict unlike during Naruto's time. Naruto was able to create an era of peace where his people could have a regular life especially for their families. This is Konoha, it's a place where anyone, even someone like you can live at ease or else there would be no point in me becoming Hokage. Naruto explains to his adopted son Kawaki as he addresses his purpose of being Hokage which is so everyone can live a peaceful life life. After achieving peace from fighting the Akatsuki and in the 4th grade Ninja War, the last thing Naruto would expect is for his son to lash out against him. And even though it may seem insignificant in terms of stakes, it's the reason why Boruto acts the way he is, which molded 
unfolded their relationship between father and son in the first chapter. And despite Naruto's best efforts to live up to the promise by sending a shadow clone home, Naruto collapses from the mental exhaustion of working all day. Boruto goes to his room in frustration, but then wanders into Naruto's office, where he sees Naruto's orange jacket he wore as a kid. Seeing how dirty and worn up it has become, Boruto throws the jacket out the window, not knowing how many battles Naruto went through as a child while wearing the jacket. Boruto hears the doorbell ring, thinking that Naruto has come home, and he throws a punch as soon as he opens the door. This is where he meets Sasuke Uchiha for the first time, and immediately Boruto is glamoured knowing that he was Naruto's rival growing up. As Sasuke heads to the Hokage office, he finds Naruto's jacket on the street that Boruto threw out the window, and gives it to Naruto, telling him that Boruto wears brand new clothes that don't have the same dirt and grime as Naruto's clothes did, showing the hard work Naruto went through as a kid. Naruto says that his generation is behind the times, but Sasuke corrects him saying that even if the times change, the soul of a shinobi remains the same, implying that Boruto is going to be just like Naruto and Sasuke when it comes to being a shinobi. Boruto eventually confronts Sasuke, where Sasuke confirms that Boruto has brand new clothes, implying that Boruto hasn't gone through the trials and tribulations of becoming a shinobi like how he and Naruto were as kids. Boruto demands Sasuke to make him his student since he has someone he wants to take down, which of course is Naruto. Sasuke asks Boruto if he knows the Rasengan, where he says that Boruto can't be a student of his if Boruto can't form the Rasengan. Upon hearing this, Boruto tells Sasuke he's going to master the Jutsu right away to become his student. And for the first time in the series, Boruto has a purpose as a shinobi. Even though Boruto has stated in the first chapter that he doesn't train, it is implied in the anime that Boruto has trained a bit under the Hyuga clan and was even taught the gentle fist. Also, he's seen training with Naruto a couple of times in preparation for the Genin exams. However, for main storyline purposes, this is the first time we have seen Boruto go into some sort of training in order to get stronger. Learning the Rasengan is going to be difficult as it took Minato 3 years in order to develop the Jutsu and about a month for Naruto to learn as a kid. Knowing how Boruto likes to take shortcuts and the easy way out, Boruto becomes frustrated in training since there isn't an efficient way to master the Jutsu. However, Boruto pressed on and within a span of just 3 days, Boruto was able to learn the Rasengan, albeit it was very, very small, but still impressive nonetheless. When Boruto shows Sasuke that he learned the Rasengan, Sasuke immediately noticed Boruto's clothes, which are tattered and dirty, just like how Naruto's jacket was as a kid, indicating that Boruto was finally starting to put in the work as a shinobi, instead of just relying on his genius mind to get through obstacles. Naruto tried to tell Sasuke that their generation is behind in the times when it comes to being a shinobi, but no matter what the time is, since Boruto seemed to be different from the two legends, the soul of a shinobi can never change, which proves Sasuke's point right. After witnessing Boruto form the Rasengan for the first time, Sasuke says that he'd be hard pressed to call the Rasengan, which Boruto throws it out of frustration, thinking he won't be able to become Sasuke's student. However, Sasuke decides to take him in as a student after witnessing Boruto throw the Rasengan, which he inadvertently creates a change in chakra nature, combining his lightning affinity with the Rasengan. Considering how great of a feat this is for Genin, Sasuke is impressed that Boruto has the ability to do this, and with the work that Boruto put in, he becomes his disciple. As Boruto is walking through the village thinking that Sasuke didn't take him in, he's confronted by Katasuke, who introduces Boruto to his scientific ninja tool. Katasuke has the ability to instantly form a complete Rasengan with the tool itself, as well as with many other high class jutsus that require very little effort and chakra. Even though it is impressive to have, it is considered cheating since it's not one's own power to begin with. And with the tuning exams coming up, Boruto, who's somebody known to take the easy way out, decides to take the tool for himself. And instead of mastering the Rasengan and perfecting its size to be able to use it better, Boruto uses the ninja tool to make a better Rasengan to show off to Sasuke that he can do the Rasengan better now. And even though Sasuke takes him in as a student, he notes that Boruto is quite different than Naruto, as he is much more talented than his father. However, does not show the same gutsy nature that Naruto had as a kid, where Sasuke does notice that Boruto is using the ninja tool to make the Rasengan instead. He hopes it wasn't the case since Naruto put an incredible amount of work to become this powerful. He was thinking that Boruto could do the same, but Sasuke was wrong. This right here is what I love about Sasuke, who despite becoming Boruto's teacher, does not confront his student about cheating for power, despite having the power to do so in the first place. It's ironically a big first lesson that he teaches to his student that Boruto must work hard to become a shinobi, while not purposely telling him to do so, as he tells Boruto that he should study who Naruto was in the past instead of the Naruto of today. Pulling himself up with his own strength to find his own identity is how Naruto became the Hokage through Sasuke's eyes, and he wants Boruto to be similar to that. Not to become the Hokage, but to find his own place as a shinobi, which is what Boruto is struggling at currently. However, with Boruto's hard-headedness to 
learn about Naruto's weaknesses, he had something bad coming for him now that he was using the scientific ninja tool for power. The Chunin exams are here and we see all the five great nations come together for the first time in years as the Leaf Village is hosting the exams, where we see all the Genin prepare for the tests. Boruto is training with Sasuke learning the Uchiha Shuriken Jutsu as we see Boruto is starting to progress under his new master. Sasuke tells Boruto to use his head a little and not look for answers immediately, which is Boruto's biggest problem as a shinobi. Since everything comes easy to him, Boruto expects everything to go his way, which is where Boruto learns a massive lesson that is going to carry with him for the rest of the series. The night before the exams, Boruto remembers the conversation he had with Katasuke, who tells him that if he ever gets in a bind, just use the scientific ninja tool to his advantage, which is the opposite of what Sasuke taught him. The first round of the exams began and all the teams are asked to answer a specific question with either yes or no. However, both answers are incorrect as the objective of the round is to not turn black from the ink below. As both sides are dropped into a pit, everyone is forced to think on the fly in order to not fall into the ink. Sai did warn everyone that whoever touches the ink will not be able to advance to the next round. As when Team 7 was falling toward the ink, Boruto immediately looks toward his wrist, indicating that he wore the scientific ninja tool during the exam. The purpose of the first round was to force Genin to either give up or don't give in. When in a difficult situation and knowing how Boruto is always looking to take shortcuts, Boruto gives up, thinking he will be eliminated. However, thanks to Sarada and Mitsuki helping him out, Boruto was able to advance to the second round. And hearing that his son progressed to the next round, Naruto actually acknowledges Boruto by congratulating him for passing the first round via email. Even though it wasn't much, this does put a small smile on Boruto's face, knowing that he's finally getting acknowledged by his father, which is what he's always wanted in the first place. Boruto continues to train with Sasuke, where his master does tell Boruto to stop making excuses since he's struggling to learn shuriken jutsu, which has become a recurring theme with Boruto's mindset about being a shinobi. The second round of the exams has begun where each team is tasked to capture the flag from the enemy team. Boruto is assigned to defend the flag due to his ability to produce shadow clones and create a numbers advantage against the enemy. The enemy team is on the offensive side where all three members are triplets who are going for team 7's flag. Boruto gets outnumbered in terms of shadow clones when the triplets themselves create their own clones, creating a 5 to 9 disadvantage. Quickly Boruto's shadow clones are destroyed and this is where he gets into a dilemma. Realizing that the enemy is close to capturing his team's flag, Boruto thinks back to the email that Naruto sent Boruto, congratulating him for passing the first round. Knowing that he has to do more to gain the acknowledgement of his father, Boruto relies on the scientific ninja tool to save the flag from being captured, creating a massive water wave and a lightning bolt to take out the enemy team. Team 7 then captures the enemy's flag and Boruto advances to the second round, but this time without anybody knowing, Boruto cheating in order to progress in the exams. Naruto is anxious wondering if his son passed the second round, where once Shikamaru broke in the news, at first he didn't seem to care but once he was alone in his office, Naruto jumps out of his chair in excitement that his son is doing well. Once Boruto gets home, he lays down and inspects the gadget that allowed him to win the second round. But someone knocks on his bedroom door and surprisingly Naruto walks to the door and we see the awkward air between the two. And this is the first conversation they had together since the whole fiasco that happened at Himawari's birthday. And you can definitely tell that there's some tension between them, from Naruto stuttering his words which is unusual considering how confident he is to Boruto being dismissive to Naruto since he still resents him for missing him on his birthday, the communication between father and son isn't the best right now. However, Naruto tells Boruto that he did well making it this far in the exams which surprises Boruto since he has been longing for acknowledgement from his dad. He tells Boruto that he knows it's very important for someone like him and says to not lose to Shikadai and reassures his son that he will be watching him from the crowd during the final rounds which does make Boruto smile. In fact, once Naruto Naruto leaves the room, you can see how happy Boruto is after finally being acknowledged by Naruto, but this time in person. Even Naruto is happy that he got to talk to his own son, even if it was short between them. The final round of the exam is here which consists of one-on-one -on -one matches between each contestant. The first battle begins where Boruto has to fight a cloud ninja by the name of Yorui who specializes in bubblegum ninjutsu that explode upon impact. Boruto and Yorui begin their fight by exchanging blows via taijutsu, but then Boruto gets caught by Yorui's bubbles which explodes explode in Boruto's face. Boruto then sees a field of bubbles surrounding him knowing that he won't be able to come into the range of his enemy without getting hurt so he's already in a dilemma. Boruto looks up into the crowd and notices his father watching and he immediately reaches into his pouch to grab a shuriken. He remembers the conversation he had with Naruto the night prior and instead of pulling out his own shuriken, Boruto relies on the ninja tool to summon his shuriken which he throws into the crowd of bubbles. And the shuriken from the ninja tool had enough spin to bend around all of the bubbles which pops the bubble Yuru 
Kyuri was blowing and renders him unconscious, allowing Boruto to win this battle. The interesting part about this is that Boruto could have easily thrown his own shuriken and probably accomplished the same exact outcome, since funnily enough, Sasuke was teaching Boruto how to bend a shuriken to its target. Going back to Sasuke's words to him saying that Boruto shouldn't look for answers immediately and instead use his head a little and think whenever Boruto is stuck in a precarious situation, just like in this battle. Maybe it wouldn't have the same spin just like the ninja tool was moving, but if Boruto for example decided to use two shuriken and have one bounce off each other just like how Sasuke showed up during training, Boruto would have easily won without needing to use the tool. This is a perfect instance of how Boruto tends to take shortcuts instead of doing it the right way. While it does accomplish the same results, Boruto is cheating himself of displaying how capable he is as a shinobi, which he is very skilled at, but decides to not show it. The next match is between Boruto versus Shikadai, and this is where Boruto's cheating ways finally gets him caught. After trying to take down Shikadai with just Taijutsu, Boruto is caught under Shikadai's shadow paralysis jutsu, where it looked like Boruto was going to lose. However, Boruto knows he can't lose, so he resorts to the ninja gadget once more and creates more shadow clones despite being caught in the shadow paralysis where Shikadai gives up since he's surrounded by the clones. In the manga and movie version of the Chunin exams, this is where Naruto confronts Boruto about using the tool. But I do want to talk about the anime version as well, since it extended the exams and explored more about the insecurity of Boruto being a shinobi. In the anime, we see Boruto advance to the final round, where he's in a three-way battle between him, Sarada, and Shinki. The night before the final round, Sasuke shows Boruto the Chidori Jutsu, which Boruto becomes incredibly interested in since it's so iconic and powerful. However, since Boruto doesn't have the Sharingan, he won't be able to do it. But Boruto does have a strong lightning chakra nature, so in time, while Boruto continues to train and learn the basics, he will eventually be able to learn jutsus as powerful as the Chidori in the future, for example, which is what Sasuke is trying to hone in onto Boruto. Sasuke explains to Boruto that there was once a man who refused to listen to others and saw power regardless of the method. He tried to change the world by himself, but in the end, he paid dearly for it. Sasuke is obviously referring to his past self, who took a destructive path and regretted many of his decisions. Obviously, Boruto wasn't going to turn into a rogue shinobi like how Sasuke did, but the path that Boruto was taking by seeking power regardless of the method, instead of using his own abilities, was going to be detrimental to being a shinobi, where he's going to pay for it dearly. In the battle against Shinki, Boruto and Sarada try to work together to take him down, but Sarada quickly gets eliminated, where Boruto has his back against the wall, since Shinki was using his strongest jutsu. And instead of just using the scientific ninja tool like how Boruto has been constantly doing, whenever he's faced with a dilemma, Boruto instead tries to rely on his own power. He creates shadow clones to form a Boruto stream, but also forms the ram sign, creating a lightning style jutsu similar to the Chidori. Boruto is able to pick things up and learn concepts incredibly quickly, so after witnessing Sasuke use the Chidori, within the span of a single night, Boruto was able to create a lightning jutsu just by using the basics of the seals to bolster his attack and overall speed. And while it isn't the Chidori itself, the fact that Boruto was able to do this is incredibly impressive. It's impressive enough to note that Boruto was able to create a jutsu that can push back against Shinki's black wings and even crack it within a single night. But in the end, Boruto knew he was going to lose since he was simply getting overpowered. So once again, he resorts back to the ninja tool since he knows that's the only way to defeat Shinki. And what I love about the anime expanding the Chunin exams is that they deliberately show Boruto trying to embrace using his own power. After talking to Sasuke where he actually manages to hold his own, but once he realizes that he's going to lose and couldn't rely on his own power, Boruto uses the ninja tool once again to come out as the winner. Boruto activates purple lightning which catches Naruto off guard since only Kakashi knows this jutsu as you see the disappointment on Naruto's face. Naruto then confronts his son by revealing to everyone that he is using a scientific ninja tool to cheat. Boruto gets disqualified and booed by the entire ninja world. And me personally, this is where I would have started my villain origin story, but this is not my story, this is Boruto's. Naruto even removes the headband from Boruto, telling him that he's not worthy of being a ninja anymore and that he will lecture him later. But Boruto interjects, questioning Naruto if he would be able to make time to talk to his son. Boruto goes as far to say that if Naruto talked to him earlier, Boruto wouldn't be in the situation in the first place. And I know this is going to annoy a lot of people, but... Boruto is right. While the obvious blame is put on Boruto since he made the conscious decision to cheat, even though he had every opportunity to not do so and understands the consequences of cheating in the first place, Boruto's main motivation of even participating in the exams was to get recognition from his father since he wasn't getting any at home. Since Naruto prioritized the role of Hokage more than the role of being a father to his kids, Boruto realized that the only way he can get any recognition was by being a shinobi and making waves in the Chunin 
exam since he knew that Naruto would be watching and it actually worked. And for the first time in the manga, Naruto was starting to open up to Boruto which made the two of them become more comfortable with each other. From Naruto sending emails to actually going home to congratulate his son on advancing in the rounds of the exams, Naruto recognized how important the exams were to Boruto. However, what Naruto didn't know at the time was that it was all for the wrong reasons. So who's to blame here? Well, the obvious answer is Boruto. But Naruto is the main reason why Boruto turned out like this in the first place. While it was Boruto's nature to take shortcuts, which is what made the decision to cheat in the exams using the Shinobi Gadget easier, Boruto was willing to do whatever it took just to get the attention of his father. While I definitely think it's fair to dislike Boruto since he was cheating in the exams, which was prohibited, I don't think it's fair that many fans don't understand Boruto's perspective, or as a matter of fact, don't want to understand Boruto's perspective to begin with. After spending many years with Naruto and seeing his story develop, many fans will always side with Naruto in this problem between Naruto versus Boruto, saying that Boruto is just an ungrateful brat who hates his father, and that's what makes him a bad character so to say. And while Boruto is an ungrateful brat in the beginning of the series, it's because Naruto kind of made him that way. And it's not entirely Naruto's fault since Boruto has his own traits that he developed but Boruto is incredibly angst and resents the role of Hokage since he barely has a relationship with his father, which is taken up by being the Hokage. And I find it funny that many fans hate that Boruto grew up good and say that he shouldn't be ungrateful since Naruto came from nothing and had to work his way up to the top. But let me ask you this, how is that any of Boruto's fault? It's not his fault that Naruto had to struggle when he was a child who was an outcast from the village. Nor does Boruto even know about this to begin with. Naruto has never told his son about his trouble upbringing and the pain that he suffered as a child since he had no idea how to communicate with his son to begin with. All Boruto was told about the Hokage is that his role was to protect Konoha and his people all while being forced to shut up and simply accept it because he is the Hokage. All Boruto ever saw was the negative side effects of Naruto being tired, lazy, and stressed from working all day as the Hokage and not the impact, power, and freedom he brings to the village which is why the ninja world is at peace today. All the stories that made Naruto a legend is something that Boruto never witnessed or even told to him, which made Boruto ignorant to the Hokage role. And while Boruto could have learned this on his own, by the time Sasuke told him to learn about the Naruto of the past, Boruto started to resent Naruto's Hokage role since he didn't fulfill his son's promise to begin with. Ironically enough, Boruto received so much hate for being coddled and spoon fed when this is exactly what Naruto strived for as he rise in the ranks of the story. He wanted to build a village that lived in a time of peace where families could live together and children could succeed without being thrown into war so the risk of losing their young lives. Naruto has witnessed this firsthand with the people he fought against such as with Obito and Nagato who were affected by the horrors of war who in turn tried to change the shinobi world by hurting others in the process. The last thing Naruto would want is for the next generation to become just like that especially with his own son or else Naruto's entire journey would be pointless. The next generation gets to thrive without worrying that they will be killed or invaded by enemies every other day just like how the previous generation generations did. And living in a peaceful time can create some people to become complacent or lazy since they have everything which applies here for Boruto. And what I personally like about Boruto is his approach to work smarter and not exactly harder which is the complete opposite to how Naruto was since he had to work harder than others just to get the recognition of the village. And let me remind you once more, this isn't a story about a boy who wants to become Okage. That's Naruto's story bro. This is Boruto's story. A boy who is trying to find his identity where eventually he loses everything that he ever had. Even though Naruto was someone who came from the gutter and had to climb his way to the top in order to reach his goals, Boruto is the complete opposite. Boruto had to reach rock bottom from being at the top in order to find his purpose of being a shinobi, which meant being scrutinized by the entire shinobi world for cheating. And this is the most compelling part about Boruto getting caught in the Chunin exams, as from this moment on, Boruto completely changes his stance on the Hokage and what it means to be a shinobi, as Momoshiki and Kinshiki invade the village. Looking for more power to consume, Momoshiki was targeting Naruto since he had the Nine Tails Chakra and Momoshiki plays such a pivotal role in Boruto's character since he's what ultimately Boruto could have ended up like. A monster yearning for power by creating mass destruction upon others. Momoshiki and Kinshiki attack the Chunin Exam Stadium starting absolute chaos around them. Boruto tries to defend himself from Momoshiki using his ninja gadget but Momoshiki absorbs all of the jutsu that Boruto throws at him. As Sasuke confirms that Momoshiki was heading after Naruto's Bijou Chakra, he states that the Suzuki was planning to make pills from a chakra fruit to increase their battle power, sort of like steroids. Upon hearing this news, Boruto looks down at his ninja tool, realizing that it serves the same exact
exact purpose, which actually scares him, knowing that a monster like this has access to this type of power. Naruto obviously doesn't approve since he sees it as doping, which isn't true power at all. But Momoshiki is having none of it. Having access to too much power can corrupt someone, and Momo displays how much he relies on it by consuming a bunch of chakra pills. In turn, he creates a massive energy ball of chakra that engulfs the entire stadium alongside all of the jutsus that he absorbed from Boruto's ninja gadget. Momoshiki begins to ensue destruction on the stadium, however, Naruto powers up in his sixth pass form to protect the people, where this is the very first time Boruto has seen Naruto at his full power. Boruto even says that he had no idea that Naruto ever had power like this, since the few times he saw his father was at the office where he was constantly exhausted and not primed for battle. Momoshiki continues the onslaught by sending more of the jutsus that he absorbed toward the stadium and eventually throws the massive energy ball of chakra toward Naruto. Naruto then goes into his Kurama form where he takes the blast head on in order to protect the village. And for the very first time in the series, Boruto understands why Naruto is the Hokage. Naruto has enough power to blast the energy ball away, but it would destroy the entire stadium, hurting the bystanders in the process. So instead, Naruto tanks the massive explosion head on. Boruto hears Sasuke's words again in his head, saying that Naruto was once a loser full of weaknesses, but he managed to pull himself up with his own strength and become the Hokage. And instead of learning about the Naruto of today, Boruto should study the Naruto of the past, which is what made him special in the first place. Realizing this, Boruto understands why Naruto meant so much to the village, and how he viewed all of the citizens as his own family. In the anime, Naruto's chakra is shared with Boruto, where he sees all of Naruto's memories bonding with his son. From the day Boruto was born, hanging out with his son when he was an infant, a young family portrait with his family, seeing Boruto and Himawari play together in the yard, and to the present day where he congratulates his son about doing well in the exams. You can tell Naruto obviously cared for his son. Realizing how much he meant to Naruto, Boruto realizes that Naruto was going to sacrifice himself and potentially die to save Konoha. The entire arena explodes from the blast and Boruto wakes up after the battle in the hospital, where he sees Hinata in another bed trying to recover. Boruto finds out that Naruto was taken away and that Hinata tried to fight back against Momoshiki and Kinshiki, but ultimately failed. Boruto immediately becomes frustrated as he thinks about the events that led up to Naruto being captured. He heads up to the Hokage office where he looks at past photos of Naruto trying to learn about his past, which is one of the first things Sasuke tells Boruto to do when he became Sasuke's student. Boruto sees Naruto's jacket and puts it on looking at himself in the mirror and admits that he is totally lame. Sasuke comes in and adds to his point by saying that Naruto was in a similar situation long ago and for the first time, Boruto adheres to Sasuke's words about learning Naruto's past by asking what did Naruto do during times just like this. Sasuke replies by telling Boruto that he should ask him after they rescue Naruto. Sasuke assures Boruto that he's a strong shinobi and if he ever puts his mind to it, he would surpass Naruto one day. But Boruto doubts this since he doesn't have the same power as his father but Sasuke reassures them that he will since he's the one training him. And just like with Naruto, Boruto also hates losing, which is another reason why he cheated in the exams. The five Kage offer themselves to go along with Boruto and Sasuke to rescue Naruto. Despite Boruto not being a ninja anymore, Sasuke still sees his student as one and gives him his headband. Boruto is finally embracing being a shinobi, where for the first time in the series, he has a purpose in doing so. Instead of him just moping and talking down about the Hokage role, he finally understands how important the Hokage is now that Naruto was gone, after witnessing his father's true power. Anyways, Boruto, Sasuke, and the five Kage set off to rescue Naruto, where we see Momoshiki trying to absorb the Bijou Chakra from Naruto. As Naruto is getting his chakra absorbed, he realized that the power that the old Sutsuki yearned for are just like the scientific ninja tools. To gain access to an incredible amount of power effortlessly is something that Momoshiki preaches, as just like the chakra pills he consumes for access to more powerful jutsus, the ninja tool serves the same exact purpose. Naruto realizes that he drove Boruto down this route into cheating the exams, since he never gave attention or time to his own family. Even though Naruto viewed the entire village as his family, he prioritized his role of Okage over the role of being a father, which did strain his relationship with Boruto. The anime does an excellent job of showing this as whenever Naruto and Boruto talk to each other, Naruto would often lecture him and not try to see Boruto's side of things. He never really acknowledged his son for who he is and even though he tried to, during the tuning exams, it was already too late. Boruto's motive for even taking the exams was to just gain the acknowledgement of his father, which led him to cheat 
cheating since Boruto didn't want to be a disappointment. Boruto, Sasuke, and the Kage then come in where they free Naruto from being absorbed. Naruto then sees his son wearing his old jacket, where Sasuke tells him that Boruto has become a ninja once again, but this time with a true purpose. Naruto apologizes to his son about pushing him this far, but Boruto has accepted that things are fine the way that they are. Adhering to Sasuke's words to learn about Naruto's past, Boruto tells his dad to eventually tell him about Naruto's past instead of lecturing him, which is what Naruto usually did whenever he spoke to his son, which Naruto agrees to do. The five Kage begin to fight Momoshiki and Kinshiki, where Kinshiki gets taken down pretty easily and they manage to corner Momo. What's interesting about Momoshiki's character is that he's essentially Boruto gone wrong. Had Boruto never got caught cheating by Naruto in the exams and embraced being a shinobi, especially after Naruto got captured, Boruto could have easily gone down the route of Momoshiki, who is incredibly power hungry. Since he's Osusuki, his main goal is to consume chakra fruits in order to gain more power, which is his main objective in the story. Momoshiki judges others based on their power and doesn't respect that the shinobi world has to train in order to get stronger, knowing that the Osusuki race is stronger than your average shinobi, hence why he calls Naruto and other characters inferior creatures. Momoshiki then portrays how his power hungry mind works as he turns Kinshiki into a chakra fruit and then proceeds to eat it, sacrificing his clanmate and killing him in the process. Momoshiki upgrades his power becoming Fuse Momoshiki where his power increases greatly. Fuse Momo then proceeds to dismantle the five Kage, taking them easily with Taijutsu. However, Naruto and Sasuke take care of him easily using their teamwork and defeat him within a span of minutes. With Momoshiki basically defeated, it looked like the fight was over. However, Katasuke somehow snuck into the fight and started blasting jutsu using the scientific ninja tool toward Momoshiki, who absorbed all of the jutsus, bolstering his power once again. He then puts all of the five kage under shadow paralysis, where he then prepares a killing blow to destroy all of the kage at once. Boruto witnessing this jumps into a small flashback, where Sasuke tells him why he's bringing Boruto in the first place. If the five kage ever gets in trouble, Boruto will need to be the one who finishes the job. And knowing how much trust his teacher has in him, Boruto understands that he has to step up or else everyone else is going to die. And instead of giving up like he usually would, Boruto forms a Rasengan, a jutsu he trained for, and throws it at Momoshiki. Naruto witnesses this and is incredibly surprised that Boruto learned it in the first place. Momoshiki puts his hand out to absorb the jutsu but notices that the Rasengan fizzled out. However, the Rasengan disappears and then hits Momoshiki, freeing the five Kage from getting killed. By training to obtain his own power with learning the Rasengan, not only did Boruto learn this jutsu, he was able to transform his chakra nature to create the vanishing Rasengan, which puts a smile on Naruto's face. Momoshiki powers up once again by consuming more chakra pills, so Naruto tells Boruto to make another Rasengan. But this time, Naruto starts to add more chakra, making the jutsu bigger, where Boruto begins to see Naruto's entire past. In the anime, Boruto sees all of Naruto's biggest bonds, such as with Jiraiya, Kushina, Minato, Neji, Sasuke, and Hinata. In the manga version, Boruto witnesses Naruto's past, such as training with Jiraiya, battling with pain, witnessing Neji's death, fighting alongside Kurama, his battle against Sasuke, and finally fighting alongside his father, just like how Naruto and Boruto are now. Boruto wonders how much training Naruto went through as Boruto is amazed by how strong his father is. Just like how gutsy Naruto is, Boruto displays this as well by exclaiming that he won't lose today. Momoshiki sees this and replies with saying that he can make just as many of those as he wishes, showing his willingness to take shortcuts to power like that. Sasuke tells Boruto that this is their chance and for the first time in the series, Boruto and Sasuke begin fighting together. Sasuke rushes Momoshiki with his katana and neutralizes his Rinnegan hand by stabbing it with the kunai. In the anime, Boruto does a Boruto stream, followed by dodging Momo's attacks while activating his Jogan. In the manga version, Boruto is the one who stabs Momoshiki's Rinnegan, but both versions set up for Boruto to launch the massive Rasengan toward Momo by surprise. Boruto and Momoshiki clash, but Boruto manages to overpower Momoshiki in the end since he wanted it more. Boruto in this battle displayed the will to win and the guts to keep going, which is the mentality of a shinobi, something that Naruto was trying to tell his son in the very first chapter. Even though Momoshiki is much stronger than Boruto, Momo didn't expect to lose since he's always viewed himself as stronger than all of the shinobi he's faced since he's called them inferior creatures. Boruto then wins the clash and sends Momoshiki flying into the atmosphere where he dies, but just before that, Momoshiki leaves Boruto with an imparting message. Since Momoshiki has the ability to see other people's fates just by using his Byakugan, 
gun. He tells Boruto that those blue eyes shall take everything away from him, implying that one day, Boruto will lose absolutely everything. He warns Boruto that those who defeat gods cannot remain ordinary individuals, so Boruto should reflect well on this terrible fate as it approaches. Going back to the introductory scene of the series, we already know that Boruto will lose everything, so Momoshiki is confirming this to Boruto with this very dark message. After the battle, Naruto admits to Sasuke that he was right, that even if the times change, the soul of a shinobi remains the same. As Boruto portrayed the guts to be a shinobi, something that he would usually reject in the beginning of the series. Once they get back home, Boruto and Naruto's relationship has immediately improved, where Boruto and Naruto have both learned their lesson of being ignorant to each other. Naruto is actually home with his family having a meal, something that he struggled to prioritize in the beginning of the arc. While Boruto has learned what it means to be a shinobi by finding his own identity. We even see Boruto playing his video games once again and he moans that he has to level up first which shows you that Boruto is not willing to take shortcuts like he used to in the first chapter where he installed mods to make playing the game easier. Boruto then asks his mother if his jacket was fixed since it was torn up during the tuning exams where Hinata asks him if he wants a brand new jacket. However Boruto declines saying that his jacket looks much cooler showing the subtle detail that Boruto has battle marks and progress as a shinobi which Naruto silently approves. As Naruto and Boruto head out, Boruto refers to Naruto as Lord Seventh since he knows that Naruto is going to do his Hokage duty, something that Boruto has never called his father before and has finally acknowledges him for doing so. They bump fists and finally the relationship together has been mended. Naruto and Boruto understand each other's roles in the village and have clear respect for one another. Boruto then has an interview on TV where he essentially goes on an apology tour, but he does say that to be a shinobi, he must have teamwork and guts, which is exactly what Naruto said in another TV interview back in the very first chapter of the series. However, Boruto adds that it takes experience to have guts and teamwork, which is what he gained when fighting Momoshiki. This ultimately reinforces Boruto to be a shinobi, however, not a shinobi like how Minato or Naruto was, but a shinobi that protects and helps the Hokage. A shinobi like Sasuke, for example. That's Boruto's ninja way, and with how Sasuke helped from the shadows, deeming the name Shadow Hokage, helping the Hokage from the side, and taking on incredibly dangerous missions, such as fighting the Yosusuki, this sets up perfectly of what Boruto is going to be like in the future. Boruto thinks about the words that Momoshiki told him that he will eventually lose it all and that those who defeat gods won't remain ordinary individuals. And Boruto says he never planned to be ordinary since he was a ninja, where he reminds us that once again that this isn't a story about a boy who aims to become Okage, since that was Naruto's story. But this is none other than Boruto's story, which I think a lot of people still don't want to accept to this day. The zero to hero, nothing to something, underdog story is well told for Naruto's character, but Boruto isn't written like that with this trope. Boruto struggles to find his identity and his shinobi way, where he eventually discovers it by embracing that he's a ninja through battling others like the Osusuki. I think this is where many people's criticisms and problems don't have any weight behind it since Boruto has overcome resenting the Okage and cheating in the exams. As a matter of fact, Boruto stops being an ungrateful brat after the first arc, which is something that many people don't even realize when they talk about his character. They say that Boruto isn't relatable because he has everything and that he's spoiled and whatnot but it's not the grind and guts that people relate to his character like how they relate to Naruto. It's finding one's identity and purpose when living your life is what makes Boruto relatable as a character. For example, growing up as a kid, I had a pretty good and safe life, attending school and making friends, but I struggled on what I wanted to be and do in life. Should I go to college and get a degree? Should I forgo school and go into the workforce? Plenty of things that I thought about, but as I grew up, I started to find my own identity and purpose on what I wanted to accomplish in life, and that's through experience. This is what Boruto went through in the first arc of the series. He struggled to find his purpose and didn't even know why he was a ninja in the first place and that it was just normally accepted in his society. But by cheating in the Chinin exams and fighting the Yosuski, Boruto understood what it takes to become a shinobi and his purpose in the village. That's what Boruto's character is and many people just don't understand this to begin with. Which is frustrating because what happens in the following arcs, Boruto transforms into an incredible main character that even rereading the beginning parts of the series, he's become totally unrecognizable to what his character is today. And that's why Boruto tells you that this is his story and not his father's, or else Boruto would just be a Naruto 2.0. As a matter of fact, Boruto is essentially what if Minato and Kushina were alive when Naruto was a kid. Naruto could have easily turned into what Boruto was as the shinobi world was still in a time of war with the Akatsuki where Naruto's relationship with Minato may have been way worse than at Naruto and Boruto's worst point in their relationship. It's something to think about, but Boruto has found his identity in the village. Boruto then reveals that he has a diamond mark on his palm after his battle against Momoshiki, where Sasuke is going to look into it on what it means. Boruto has to attend his next mission, which is to watch over the feudal lord's son.
son, Tenso, who is just like Boruto in the beginning of the series. Coming from a wealthy family, Tenso would buy anything that he wanted since he had so much money and what really paralleled him to Boruto was his relationship with his father. Similar to Boruto's situation, the feudal lord was dealing with more important matters in the land of fire, where Tenso felt abandoned since he never got the attention that he wanted. Tenso loved to play the ninja card game and instead of buying packs to pull rare cards like any other person would, Tenso would buy endless amount of packs and even whole stores to get what he wanted. Boruto also played this card game a lot but would buy packs with his own money from his missions where he was only limited to a few at a time. Anyways, Boruto was called in to watch over Tenso where Tenso notices Boruto's dirty clothes. Even though Boruto was the son of the Hokage, his clothes were tattered from his past battles where Tenso insults him for wearing worn down clothes. Just like how Sasuke noticed that Boruto was wearing new clothes at the beginning of the series, indicating that he really wasn't putting in the work as a shinobi, Tenso notes the opposite that despite coming from a successful family, Boruto had worn down clothes. With Tenso being even younger than Boruto, he was even brattier and ungrateful than Boruto was, where he would even note that the tea offered to him was cheap and that being watched by a shinobi was under his level of lifestyle, essentially being a mirror to what Boruto was before the battle against Momoshiki. During the mission, Boruto is watching over Tenso at a hotel, where Tenso has rented the entire place to himself. Tenso reveals that he doesn't have many friends and is looking forward to playing some cards, where he shows his ninja card collection to Boruto. Boruto is immediately impressed that Tenso has all the rare collectibles, where Boruto finds out that Tenso has a card that Boruto has always wanted, where he keeps buying packs in the first place. Tenso offers to give the card to Boruto, since Tenso has all the money in the world to buy these cards. But Boruto realizes how wrong it is, and thinks about how he used to mod his video games to make playing the game much easier, since the enjoyment came from grinding the levels. Just like with how Boruto was earlier, Tenso also was prone to taking many shortcuts, which in this case was buying any card that he wanted to. Tenso then offers to Boruto that he could have the card if he could teach him ninjutsu, which Boruto does accept. However, Boruto rejects getting the card from Tenso since he's now someone who gets what he wants by his own strength, no matter how hard it is, which shows you the progression Boruto has made as a shinobi and overall as a character. Tenso gets excited to learn how to become a shinobi but quickly gives up. Once he starts to struggle, once again showing signs of young Boruto where he would often give up whenever he got stuck in the mud. Tenso is very unmotivated, however he wants to become a ninja since that's all his dad is talking about and that would be a way to get his father's attention. Just like with how Boruto took the tuning exams was his way to get Naruto's attention. Tenso continues to train despite struggling and eventually is able to hit the target from shuriken practice. Tenso looks at his hands and realizes how dirty he's become, which shows you that he was putting in the work to train, something that Tenso was insulting Boruto before since Boruto's clothes was dirty. Boruto explains that hard work can lead to something special, something that a credit card can't even buy, since that was Tenso's shortcut to gaining all of the rare ninja cards. When Boruto and Tenso were playing cards, Boruto decided to give Tenso the Naruto card since Tenso didn't have it. And instead of just buying it with his credit card, through the training and hard work, Tenso was able to get a rare card from his persistence alone. Boruto explains that he was just like Tenso growing up and did a lot of stupid things to get his dad's attention. Instead of just letting Tenso do what he wants, Boruto guides Tenso to realize he was in a similar situation and that he should try to find his own identity by not just acting out, which could lead to some serious consequences. The mission ends and Boruto goes back to start a new mission with Team 7. This time it's a B rank mission, which is going to be the highest rank mission so far in Team 7's tenure, a mission that could raise Boruto's stock or plummet as a shinobi, depending how the team does. As Boruto is walking home, he notices that Tenso had snuck the card that Boruto has always wanted into his pocket when he wasn't looking, since Tenso knew that Boruto wouldn't accept it. Boruto notes that it was considerate for a brat like him, since Tenso was shown to be selfish, which shows you that Boruto has pointed Tenso in the right direction. And as much as Boruto wanted to keep the card, he realized that he shouldn't have it and instead should return it to Tenso since he didn't really work for it by his own accord. However, when Boruto tries to find him, he overhears from his father that Tenso was captured by the Bojina Bandits gang, a crew that has been robbing Konoha as of late. Realizing that his friend is in danger and can't protect himself, Boruto understands that he must save Tenso or else he would die. And despite having a B rank mission soon, Boruto decides to abandon the mission in order to save his friend. He tells Sarada that he can't go, which he values as important. In the ninja world, those who break the rules are scum. That's true. But those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. A quote from the sixth Okage, Kakashi Hatsuke, as he explains to his students what it means to be a ninja in the beginning of the Naruto series. This is what Boruto carries with him. Abandoning his mission, which will make his ninja credibility go down in order to help out a friend, is something that Boruto is willing to die for. While Tento is captured by the Mojina gang, he overhears from Shojoji, the leader of the gang, that he is going to be used as a bargaining chip for the feudal lord. And instead of just standing around, Tento realizes that he can fight back, which he does by breaking 
out of being tied with the shuriken. He tells Shojoji that no one is going to acknowledge scum like him as a ninja, which is why he doesn't have his own ninja card. And even though he's not strong, Tento can still help out his father by taking down the Mojina Bandits gang. However, Shojoji has none of it and tries to eat Tento's brain, but thankfully Boruto comes in for the rescue. Boruto takes out the henchman pretty quickly and begins to battle Shojoji. However, he begins to have trouble against his wind barrier that can repel any attack coming toward him. Shojoji takes care of all of Boruto's shadow clones pretty quickly and is about to kill Boruto but gets struck in the back by a shuriken thrown from Tento. The training that Boruto put Tento under to learn how to throw a shuriken pays off as it basically saves Boruto's life. The guts that it takes for Tento to stand up to Shojoji despite being weak and the teamwork that it took to take him down is exactly what Boruto taught Tento to become a shinobi which is to have guts and teamwork. The same exact words Naruto preached in the very first chapter of the series. However, Shojoji wasn't finished off yet so Boruto goes to the final blow but is quickly stopped as his Rasengan disappears. He looks at his right hand and notices that the small diamond mark on his palm has progressed into something bigger which scares the living shit out of Shojoji thinking that Boruto might be part of some organization but becomes relieved when he finds out that Boruto has no part of it. Shojoji tries to finish the fight but thankfully Saruta and Mitsuki come to Boruto's rescue and finish him off. And just like with Boruto, the rest of Team 7 abandon their mission in order to save their friend, just like how Boruto did for Tento. After the mission, Tento meets his dad who tells him that he's going to become an adult worthy of supporting the feudal lord, just like how Boruto wants to support the Hokage. Boruto returns the card back to Tento where Tento has finally learned his lesson. You have to get what you want by your own strength, no matter how hard it is. Boruto and Tento say their goodbyes and later we see Boruto trying to open more packs to get the card that he's always wanted, but this time by his own terms. We come to find out that the card that Boruto always wanted was Sasuke, somebody he looks up to and his teacher of course. The story then jumps to Sasuke interrogating Shojoji about the mark on Boruto's palm where Shojoji says that the people who have discussed the marks were similar to Boruto's mark who refer to themselves as the Kara organization. And with the introduction of the Kara organization, the prologue of the Boruto series has ended with a new era and set of characters incoming, meaning that Boruto's life is only going to become even crazier and for the worse. The vessel arc begins with the Kara organization discussing that they have lost their vessel. Whatever it is, it's important to their operation where it is somewhere missing in the land of fire where Boruto is living. The beginning of the arc opens up with Boruto and Naruto sparring each other in front of the academy students. Boruto opens up with shadow clones but Naruto takes them out with ease, providing a distraction for Boruto to throw a vanishing Rasengan from Naruto's back. Naruto swats it away but compliments Boruto for the Rasengan, noticing that he's been putting in the training. Boruto then tries to blind Naruto with Shuriken, following up with another Rasengan but that doesn't work either. Boruto then eggs Naruto on to fight back where the father and son prepare to Rasengan clash each other. Boruto does his Boruto stream to where Naruto clashes his Rasengan with Boruto's. However, it's just a shadow clone. With Naruto's hand stuck in the ground, Boruto does a water style jutsu and then follows it up with the lightning style jutsu to electrify the water. The cool thing about this is that Boruto was doing this during the tuning exams using the scientific ninja tool. Combining a wave of water with electricity to shock the enemies is what Boruto did with the tool, which was a shortcut to power but by training, Boruto is now able to do it by his own accord. Naruto takes note that Boruto is combining his jutsus, which impresses him that Boruto has become so much stronger. Naruto makes a wall to block out the electric water and his hand begins to absorb all of Boruto's jutsu. Boruto just stands there thinking that Naruto is still behind the wall, but Naruto gets behind Boruto, telling him that a ninja must read the hidden meanings within the hidden meanings, the second lesson that he teaches to his son. Naruto takes Boruto out with a simple kick and the sparring is over. Naruto later reveals that he was using a scientific ninja tool as he wanted to test out against Boruto which angers him since Boruto thinks it's cheating. Boruto tells Naruto that he was lectured by him on how it's wrong to use it but Sasuke comes to Naruto's defense. The essence of using a scientific ninja tool is about how one uses it and not the tool itself since they aren't inherently good or bad. The reason why it was banned in the exams was because Genin are supposed to display their own power and not somebody else's which is what Boruto got mixed up when confronting Naruto about it. These ninja tools will come in handy when it comes to fighting other threats such as with the Kara organization who is the current villain group in the series. Knowing that Kara has connections to Boruto's mark, the Leaf Village has started investigations to learn about this mystery which will change Boruto's life soon. They suspect that there is an Osusuki among them which Naruto explains that the Osusuki think nothing of 
humans, which means the Leaf will need to have all the power that they have to protect their own people. Boruto understands this but thinks that ninjutsu is the only answer, but with how the Osusuki can absorb ninjutsu with ease, more power is necessary. Katasuke, who created the scientific ninja tools, is an example of this, as he has another power that supports Naruto to protect the village. It just depends on how one uses this, which applies to absolutely everything. Boruto counters that shinobi are about hard work and guts, which is true, but there is more than just that in today's era. Naruto gives Team 7 a mission to help Katasuke deliver a scientific ninja tool, which Boruto immediately rejects, since he has come to despise them since they brought him so much humiliation during the exams. Sarada and Mitsuki try to reason with Boruto to take the mission, similar to how Sarada wanted Boruto to take the Chunin exams in the beginning of the series. While Boruto understands what Naruto is saying, he still resents the tools and frankly just doesn't care about them. However, Mitsuki manages to convince Boruto to take the mission after he tells him that the tool that they have to deliver is Lord Seven's hand, a hand that's important to protecting the village, just like how Boruto wants to be a hand in protecting the Hokage, whenever Sarada does take that role. Boruto says that he understands what it takes to be a shinobi, and he's not just gonna reject the mission because he doesn't like it, since that is a loser move, something that he would usually do during the tuning exams. As Team 7 go on their mission, they take a train to the location where they run into Al, a war veteran from the 4th Great Ninja War. However, there's a different look for Al, as his entire body has been modified with scientific ninja tools, since his body was destroyed after getting hit by a Ten Tails Bijou Bomb. But thanks to Katasuke, Al was able to recover his body with prosthetics and can now live a normal life post-war arc. Despite having a distaste for ninja tools, Boruto realizes its importance as it can help many civilians, such as with prosthetics, which gives people a chance to live again. Al suspects that Boruto doesn't like scientific ninja tools, so he proceeds to threaten to kill him as if he were his enemy with a screwdriver. As he explains that the tools aren't inherently good or bad, but it all depends on how you use them. Just like with the screwdriver for example, it can be used to help somebody such as building prosthetics or it can be used to take someone's life. This is similar to what Naruto and Sasuke tell Boruto as the series dives into the ethics behind using the tools, as even though it can be used as a crutch in battle, it can also serve as guidance for people with disabilities. Boruto realizes the morality of the tools and begins to grow an appreciation for it after seeing how it can help many people. Once Team 7 arrives at their destination, Boruto is glad that he had a conversation conversation with Al and would like to know more about him. It was then revealed that Al is an outer member of Kara and was the one who set a genjutsu on Katasuke which led to Boruto cheating in the exams. Al was tasked with bringing back the vessel for Kara where he was supplied with other ninja tools since he can't actually fight normally anymore where once again the tools come into play for helping somebody for both good and bad purposes. Team 7 gets to their location where they have to help out with the assistance of testing the tools where Boruto actually begins to enjoy himself using the tools despite having a dislike toward them. He understands the use of them as he sees that Katasuke has provided powerless people a meaning to their life with the help of the tools, as for example Chamaru, a ninja hound that lost his leg that couldn't go on missions anymore, now has a prosthetic leg where he can continue as a ninja hound. That's why Katasuke is so valued by Naruto as like the Hokage, he can bring hope to many people who have thought they have no choice to live a normal life, and aid in a right hand to the Hokage which Boruto values so deeply. Team 7 is then interrupted and now is put on another mission, but this time to find Konohamaru in Mugino since they have seemingly lost contact with them. Boruto takes this mission gracefully where Katasuke and Chamaru tag along with Team 7. Katasuke attends the mission in a battle suit since he's not a fighter, but it will allow him to fight alongside Team 7, which is what happens when they fight Kara's robotic puppets. Team 7 eventually catch up to Konohamaru and Mugino who are in a cave, but then all of them are confronted by Ao. Konohamaru has managed to gather intel about Kara and the vessel where Ao decided that he must kill everyone everyone since the leaking intel about Kara would be a problem. However, Team 7 manages to fend off Ao but with the cost of Mugino who sacrifices his life in the process. The anime dives deep into the relationship between Mugino and Boruto as they become close friends and with Boruto witnessing his friend die, he becomes incredibly frustrated that he's just lost a friend that he's just gotten close with. Boruto realizes how the tools can help or hurt someone and understands Ao's words when he said that the tools aren't inherently good or bad but it all depends on how you use them to your own benefit. Boruto calls out the irony of it since Al is using the tools in a good way in order to live but in an evil way to harm others. He realizes that if this continues, people will start to misunderstand the use of the tools and hate them without knowing how beneficial it is, just like how Boruto was, going back how he tends to be ignorant to other beliefs. However, he wants to teach Al a lesson which is the proper use of the tools, where Team 7 plans a counterattack. Katasuke even adds that these tools, while powerful, cannot be used as a crutch, just like how cheats are in video games, especially against 
against someone who's already cheating in the first place, such as with Ao. Like with any application of ninjutsu, the use of tools also is important, where practice does make perfect through Boruto's perspective. Anyways, Team 7 begins to battle Ao, where everyone forces Ao to absorb ninjutsu as a distraction for Boruto to attack. Boruto then comes up from behind and clashes with Ao with the chakra blades, where Ao stabs Boruto through the chest. However, it's a shadow clone, which forces Ao to hold onto the blade, draining his chakra. This is a perfect example of a ninja reading the meaning behind the meanings, as Boruto displays his high IQ to slowly weaken Ao. Boruto then destroys the absorption machine that Ao was holding to eliminate the tool, making Ao defenseless, but he counters with drones that take out Konohamaru. Boruto then fights back and displays his brilliance as a shinobi, by taking out the drones one by one high up in the air. Like bro, my guy was literally upside down, that's how crazy this fight was. However, Ao manages to grab Boruto a hold, but gets tricked by a shadow clone again, where Boruto finishes the fight with the Rasengan. After getting the W, Boruto points the screwdriver to Ao the same exact way Ao did to Boruto back in the train, showing how tools aren't inherently good or bad, but it depends on how you use them. Ao then tells Boruto to kill him with the screwdriver to avenge his friend Mugino, however Boruto wants to save him, by telling him that he's alive and not just a tool to be used. Don't give up on living, Boruto says, as he understands that tools can be used for good, such as saving people. Even though he can't forgive Ao for killing his friend, he can understand that Ao can use these tools for good if he does get saved. The classic talk no jutsu, like father like son. This is one thing a lot of people tend to ignore about the series as a whole, as even though there are completely new concepts such as technology, the soul of a shinobi remains, going back to Sasuke's statement in the first chapter. No matter what, Boruto still takes pride in being a shinobi, which is what he states when battling Kawaki in the future, and that goes for many characters such as Ao, who eventually dies in the end by Kashi and Koji. At his last breath, despite abandoning the shinobi techniques, Ao saves Boruto using ninjutsu something that he didn't use when fighting Boruto as Ao dies as a ninja. Kashin Koji follows up and tries to kill all of Team 7 immediately by paralyzing them, but Konohamaru manages to break through from being sealed where he and Koji begin to battle. However, Koji gets the jump and begins to burn Konohamaru alive, which makes Boruto frustrated that his sensei is dying and that he can't do anything about it. As a last ditch effort, Boruto reaches out his hand with the mark on his palm where the mark begins to spread across his arm and face. Boruto then begins to absorb the paralysis Jutsu from Team 7 and the fire that was burning Konohamaru alive. Kashi and Koji becomes incredibly shocked that Boruto has a mark called Karma, which piques Koji's interest enough to leave the battle altogether. As Team 7 is heading back to the leaf from their mission, they run into a boy who has the same exact mark. It is later revealed that this boy is Kawaki, the other main character of this series, who will play a massive role as we see in the future time skip scene. And I've already done a deep dive on Kawaki's character as he's an incredibly complex person as he represents many of the broken themes and obsessions that will change the trajectory of the series. And from here on out, the series is now shared between the two brothers, Boruto and Kawaki. The brotherhood begins between Boruto and Kawaki once Kawaki gets introduced into the series. Kawaki is the lost vessel from the Kawa organization who also possesses the Karma Seal, and unlike with Boruto, Kawaki has the ability to use the Karma well. It all started when Team 7 ran into Kawaki who eventually woke up and began fighting Garo, an outer member of Kara who was trying to retrieve him, and despite his best efforts, Garo was quickly taken down after Kawaki activated his karma, which resonated with Boruto's karma, indicating that they share a similar bond when it comes to this power. Once the battle is over, Kawaki is taken back to the leaf, where Naruto actually takes Kawaki into his family, where Boruto and Kawaki live in the same house. Upon seeing that this person will live with the Uzumaki family, Boruto becomes incredibly frustrated that someone this powerful and blood hungry is living with his mom, dad, and sister. After seeing how ruthless this Kawaki can truly be, the last thing Boruto would want is this person to be around Hinata and Himawari. When Kawaki first entered the Uzumaki household, he tries to escape but in the process breaks Himawari's face, which holds so much significance between Boruto and Kawaki's relationship. Upon seeing that the vase was broken, Boruto confronts Kawaki about this to which Kawaki apologizes but it's clear that Boruto is not happy that he's living with a kid like this. This is apparent as the two would often argue, bicker, and fight amongst each other as if they were all already brothers to begin with. Eventually the two stop fighting each other where Kawaki asks Boruto on where he got his karma from. Boruto learns that Kawaki gained his karma via experiments where many children died in the process. Boruto acknowledges that Kawaki went through a lot and understands the pain he went through to gain the karma, but Boruto still hasn't forgiven Kawaki for breaking him face, which
which he brings up once again. While this may just be Boruto being stubborn, Boruto wants Kawaki to make up for it by rebuilding the entire vase. And as tedious as it is, Boruto is forcing to work for his apology, as despite apologizing to him and buying a completely new vase, Boruto still doesn't accept Kawaki's atonement. Think of it sort of as training to get one's power, but instead of trying to get stronger, is trying to right one's wrongs when making a mistake. This is what Boruto is trying to make Kawaki learn. In order to gain his forgiveness, he's gonna have to work for it. Just like how Boruto was forced to become a shinobi with his own power through hard work and guts. Even if it's a bit extreme and odd to make Kawaki glue back an entire vase, the vase doesn't just symbolize Kawaki building his life back together, as he was someone who came from nothing and eventually gained something when under Naruto's watch, but it's also the foundation of the brotherhood between the two protagonists. Once Boruto realized that Kawaki was sincere about breaking the vase, he started to acknowledge him more. Boruto and Naruto decide to spar again, but this time with the use of the caramel. And since Boruto and Kawaki want to learn more about the secrets of it, Kawaki helps Boruto out with using the karma since Boruto doesn't even know how to activate it in the first place. Kawaki then activates his own, which begins to resonate with Boruto's karma, and we clearly see how much of a power boost it gives to Boruto, as he's able to exchange blows with Naruto and even push Naruto to use Shadow Clone Jutsu to protect himself from Boruto's Thunderclap arrow. In the anime, Boruto almost manages to hit Naruto where he tricks him with the Shadow Clone and nearly gets a hit from behind, where Boruto says that you gotta read behind deception, a lesson that Naruto taught him when they sparred at the beginning of the Vessel arc. A ninja must read the hidden meanings within the hidden meanings, where ironically Boruto gets behind Naruto, in the same exact way that Naruto got behind Boruto when they first initially sparred at the beginning of the arc. This displays the intelligence that Boruto has as he's able to quickly apply the lessons that Naruto has taught him during their training, as even though Boruto is a prodigy, he's still learning the ropes of being a ninja, where the series has clearly shown Boruto training with his father, on his own, and eventually with Team 7 in the future. What's funny is that many people say that Boruto isn't about ninjas anymore, where even though the main threats are Otsutsukis and cyborgs, the idea that being a shinobi doesn't exist anymore is funny to me, as the main character of the series embraces being a shinobi, especially now in the story. Once again going back to Sasuke's quote from chapter 1, even if times change, the soul of a shinobi will always remain the same. This applies for Boruto in the next generation, as it even influences Kawaki to learn the ropes of ninjutsu after witnessing Boruto and Naruto train together. After learning about how chakra binds everyone together, which is what makes Boruto and Naruto's relationship special, Kawaki realizes the value of gluing Himawari's vase back together. It brings people together. The next day, Kawaki has started to glue the vase back together, but it mopes that it's going to be impossible to do so. Boruto insults Kawaki for giving up as he realized it was going to be tough, as Boruto had this dilemma in his own character, which we witnessed in the Chunin exams when he got caught cheating with the tool. Boruto starts to open up to Kawaki about wanting to learn about the karma, where even Kawaki compliments Boruto for thinking it through, to the point where Kawaki offers to teach Boruto everything that he knows about this power. They begin to train with each other, where Boruto learns how to absorb jutsu. Once they end their training, they do the unison sign to indicate the end of their sparring, where both Boruto and Kawaki's karma react to each other. Boruto senses Momoshiki's presence, where he heals the wound off of Boruto's hand, which he got from training, a hint of foreshadowing that Momo is still present in the story despite being dead. Delta, an inner member of Kara, invades the leaf, trying to retrieve Kawaki back, so Naruto begins to battle her. The fight becomes incredibly intense to the point where eventually Delta targets Momori and tries to blast her with laser beams that can negate any form of healing. Kawaki sacrifices his body to protect Naruto and Himawari from the lasers, where he says that he had no other choice but to protect the Hokage. Kawaki says that he and Boruto are even now when it comes to that vase, since he realized how important the relationship between the Uzumaki family was. After the battle where Naruto defeats Delta, Kawaki asks Naruto if he can teach him some ninjutsu. This puts a smile on Boruto's face as he realizes that Kawaki has embraced being a shinobi, and that in order to succeed, you must put in the work. While the story emphasizes how Naruto has changed Kawaki's life by showing him love and care, something that Kawaki has never experienced growing up, the story subtly shows how Boruto pushes Kawaki to work for something that he wants by making making him rebuild Himawari's vase. As he begins to rebuild it piece by piece, not only does he get his life back together, but his relationship with Boruto dramatically improves to the point where Boruto even views Kawaki as his friend, from the time that they spent together at home. Time passes on and Naruto asks the two how they feel about their karmas. Boruto explains that he's starting to feel his heart racing even when he's not training and he hasn't been sleeping well. Meanwhile, Kawaki explains that he doesn't have nightmares anymore and is starting to feel more powerful after learning ninjutsu from Naruto. Kawaki eventually gains enough confidence to tell Boruto that she 
again, the leader of Kara was the one who gave him the karma. Knowing that they have to take him down to solve the karma's mystery and had to get rid of it from their bodies will only force the two of them to develop an even closer bond than just friends. At this point in the story, Kawaki has become too important for Boruto to leave alone since they are suffering from the karma together, where for the first time, Boruto calls Kawaki his brother in the story. They agree to take down Jigen and the rest of Kara together since they are the root of all their problems in the story, where Kawaki is sold on this idea. Jigen eventually comes to the leaf trying to retrieve Kawaki, however Naruto stops him from doing so. This leads to Naruto getting teleported away, where he and Sasuke begin to battle Jigen in another dimension. Boruto realizes that something is up when his karma activates so he runs back to the house, and he finds Kawaki on the floor in disbelief that Naruto is gone. Shikamaru then puts Kawaki under shadow paralysis, where Konoha ninja put a barrier around the Uzumaki household, so Kawaki doesn't escape. Shikamaru suspects that Kawaki is a spy for Kara, which angers Boruto since he knows that Kawaki wants to destroy them. The other Konoha ninja do a sweep of the house and find Himawari's vase glued together, suspecting that it could be a ninja tool for cursed jutsu. Boruto denies this as he realized that Kawaki went out of his way to fix the vase, which essentially gained the trust of Boruto. Eventually, Kawaki is able to sense Naruto's chakra through Naruto's prosthetic arm, where he and Boruto create a portal using their karma in order to get to the dimension where Naruto is at. He was defeated by Jigen where he was sealed away in a pot, but we come to find out Boro and another inner of Kara is protecting the pot holding Naruto. And with the help of Kawaki, a new form of Team 7 has been created, where Boruto and Kawaki fight together and amplify their karmas together using teamwork to create incredibly powerful attacks. However, Boro relies on his regenerative ability where he can tank hits from Team 7, draining them of their chakra. And despite Sarada using Chidori to destroy the core, getting rid of Boro's regeneration, this still isn't enough to kill Boro as he takes out everyone in Team 7 once his body begins to deform. Boro begins to punch Boruto endlessly in a rage, thinking that he's destroying him, but we then see Boruto floating in the sky. Despite it being Boruto's body, this just isn't Boruto. This is Momoshiki awakening for the very first time, stating, Don't you get cocky, you inferior creature. Once again, referring to his power hungry mind that he views everyone as. Momoshiki then obliterates Boro with Taijutsu, and after absorbing some of Naruto's chakra, Momoshiki creates a massive Rasengan to finish the fight. While it is brief, Momoshiki displays a crazy amount of power that not even the inner members of Kara can fight back from. Momoshiki then begins to lose control as he states that it's still a ways away from Boruto losing it all, hinting at the prophecy that he faded toward Boruto in the beginning arc. The truth about this occurring is that Boruto's karma seal is progressing within his body. You see, before Momoshiki died, he placed a karma onto Boruto's body, which in turn will allow Momoshiki to come back from the dead in the future. Once Amado joins the leaf, we find out that the karma works as a download file, where the Osu data is copied onto its host body for a certain time. Once the download is complete, the Osuski can resurrect through the karma since the host DNA has been overwritten by the Osuski, which will kill the vessel in the end, ceasing it to exist. In other words, once Boruto's karma finishes extracting, Momoshiki can resurrect which would kill Boruto in the end. With the fact that Momoshiki is awakened through Boruto once already, this is going to be a common occurrence since Boruto is becoming an Osuski. Right now, there is no answer to stopping the karma's extraction. Action. So with knowing this fate, Boruto has to come to terms that he may lose his life soon to Momoshiki. Anyways, Jigen is killed off by Kashin Koji and Ishiki Osusuki has made his appearance with one goal in mind, to implant another karma seal onto Kawaki. Since Jigen died, there can be multiple vessels once an Osusuki is revived, freeing Kawaki from the karma. However, that meant Ishiki was heading toward Konoha to find Kawaki to give him another one. Knowing that Ishiki is much stronger than Jigen, who beat the hell out of Naruto and Sasuke, Boruto offers to help in battle since he knows that his sensei and father couldn't take Ishiki when he was weaker. As Naruto and Boruto continue to bicker on if Boruto can help out, Sasuke does ask Boruto if he's prepared to die for the village, something that he and Naruto have already built within the resolve. Boruto explains that he's prepared to die in battle since he's a ninja, but what really frightens him is Momoshiki taking over and killing everyone that he loves. Ishiki arrives in the village where he and Naruto begin to battle, but Naruto quickly gets 
overpowered by him. Sasuke comes in for the rescue where he begins to throw shuriken at Ishiki where he quickly shrinks it with his dojutsu. Sasuke then throws his katana where Ishiki expects to shrink it but it doesn't work. By using the transformation jutsu, Boruto appears in the katana once again, applying Naruto's lesson of reading behind deception when in battle. Even against the strongest villain in the entire franchise, Boruto continues to rely on his shinobi knowledge to get through this battle, as we see Boruto wearing Sasuke's headband once again. Sasuke has promised to Boruto that if Momoshiki takes over, he would take Boruto down. Knowing that they have to fight another Osusuki, Boruto asks Sasuke if he can borrow his headband again, once again confirming his resolve to fight as a shinobi. And Boruto promises Sasuke that he will return the headband since it's valuable to the both of them, where Boruto then proceeds to teleport Ishiki away using the Karma Seal, eliminating a massive threat that would destroy the entire Hidden Leaf Village. After witnessing Boruto do this, Ishiki becomes concerned that Boruto has access to this much power of the Karma, where Naruto and Sasuke begin to battle him. The two get destroyed pretty quickly by Ishiki since they are no match and as Sasuke is going to die, Boruto puts his life on the line by stopping a cube from crushing Sasuke to death. And by using the high compression Rasengan, Boruto is able to hold the cube from killing Sasuke. Ishiki shrinks the cube where Boruto realizes that Ishiki can't actually kill him. He discovers that Ishiki needs to feed him to the Tentails in order to gain a chakra fruit, so Ishiki needs him alive or else the plan goes to shit. Boruto then pulls out a kunai and threatens Ishiki that if he moves, he will kill himself to ruin his plan. Boruto explains that he's prepared to die the moment he's entered this battle, and once he sees Ishiki move, he actually tries to stab himself in the throat. This displays how far Boruto is willing to take it in order to succeed in the mission, as going back to the academy days, when Boruto was trying to retrieve the bell from Kakashi during the Genin exams, Kakashi explains that in order to become a Genin, you must be willing to break your arm. At the time, Boruto thought that was crazy, but eventually he learned a lesson from it, which is to be able to sacrifice something in order to fulfill the mission. To be able to try to take your own life in order to succeed in the mission is impressive enough with Boruto trying to stab himself with the kunai. However, Ishiki shrinks it and then proceeds to break Boruto's arm, making him writhe in pain. Going back to Kakashi's words once again, Naruto then powers up into Baryon mode and gives gives Ishiki the beats, where Kawaki eventually kills him off. Thinking that the battle is over since Ishiki has been eliminated, Momoshiki awakens and stabs Sasuke's Rinnegan. Boruto's biggest fear has come back as he was afraid that he would hurt his loved ones if Momo came out, and that's exactly what happened here. With Naruto incapacitated from using the Baryon mode transformation, it was up to Sasuke and Kawaki to save Boruto. The bond between Boruto and Kawaki has grown deep as Kawaki is yelling at Boruto to wake up, but it's just not working. Sasuke tries to fulfill his promise of killing Boruto if Momoshiki awakens, but fails after Momo hits Sasuke with the vanishing Rasengan. It was all up to Kawaki to stop him as he thinks about his past with Boruto, such as with the vase and the promise to take down Shigen. Kawaki does a fire style jutsu and burns himself, forcing Momoshiki to absorb it. This allows Boruto to awaken and fight back to take control of his body. He then stops Momoshiki from teleporting Kawaki, where he rips off his horn, allowing Boruto to regain his body once again. Boruto apologizes for the trouble, and Kawaki recognizes Boruto as his brother, cementing their brotherhood together from the battles that they just fought through. As even though Kawaki lost his karma, their goal of eliminating the karma from their bodies isn't over, as Kawaki promises that he will somehow get rid of Boruto's karma too. A new era begins as Naruto and Sasuke are no longer the crazy powerhouses they were once revered as. Even though they are still stronger than basically 99% of the ninja world, with Naruto losing Kurama and Sasuke losing the Rinnegan, it was now up to Boruto and Kawaki to protect the leaf, since they are both now 80% Otsutsuki from their karmas. This is where Boruto really begins to become aware that Momoshiki may come out again, as once Boruto came back to the leaf from battling Ishiki, Boruto doesn't even try to go to sleep, out of fear that Momo may wake up and hurt his family. The anime highlights this dilemma, as Boruto is constantly tired around others, and doesn't even want to eat since it gets you sleepy, at least to him. And the last thing Boruto would want is to fall asleep, allowing Momoshiki to awaken. Naruto does give Boruto a talk about this problem, and tells him that he will do anything to save his son, even if it means dying in the process, as he does say that when it comes to protecting his child, a parent can pull out an incredible amount of power, even if they are not the strongest person in the world. And despite losing Kurama, Naruto is still incredibly powerful and can do some impressive things in battle, which would protect Boruto. Hearing this and realizing that this is Naruto's ninja way, Boruto finally falls asleep after getting some security from Naruto. However, with Boruto's karma rapidly developing, his body would become fully Otsutsuki as 
quickly in a matter of weeks. This scares the hell out of Naruto as despite putting on a brave act as a father and as Hokage, he begins to hyperventilate knowing that his son may die soon. Just like how he did during Shippuden when he found out that the Leaf Village was trying to kill Sasuke. It just shows you just how much Naruto views his son and how much he cares about him. Amado then offers Boruto chakra pills that will help slow down the process of the karma extraction on his body. However, there are side effects to taking them such as Boruto potentially dying. As even though he doesn't have to take them, Boruto decides to consume the medicine despite the side effects. Naruto is confused on how Boruto has the ability to make this decision so quickly, but with what has been happening as of late, Boruto has quickly found his resolve as a shinobi to the point where he's been preparing for the worst. That's why he's able to make decisions like this incredibly fast, which shows you the maturity Boruto has undertaken now that he's become Otsutsuki. With Ishiki gone, the current threat is Code, who wants to get revenge for his god being killed off. With Kawaki telling Boruto how powerful Code truly is, everyone decides to start training in preparation to battle Code. But Kawaki disagrees with learning the basics of ninjutsu as it won't be enough to take someone like Code down. But Boruto disagrees as this is the way that he was taught in order to gain more power by training. Kawaki counters that it's useless against Code, so the two brothers begin to spar each other to pick how they were going to train. Boruto defeats him in the end using karma, where Boruto tells Kawaki to not carry the burden on himself, but to rely on Team 7 more since they are his friends. Boruto says that it isn't Kawaki's fault for Kara targeting the Leaf, and that they have to eliminate these enemies since that's what Shinobi are. Boruto recognizes Kawaki as a ninja, where he gives Kawaki his headband as a gift. Boruto and Kawaki continue to live their lives as they hang out with their friends, as Boruto is still trying to pull Sasuke's card from those ninja cards. But the two are constantly being monitored since they have no idea when Code will come to the village, and once Kawaki hears that he can bypass Konoha's security by erasing his chakra signature, Kawaki leaves the leaf to confront Code. Boruto is able to sense that Kawaki has left the village due to their Otsutsuki affinity, where Boruto begins to follow Kawaki out of the leaf. He eventually comes to Kawaki's rescue as Code was going to take Kawaki away. He finds out that he was willing to get himself killed so Code doesn't hurt the village. He even offers to leave with Code to meet Ada, another villain of the series, but Boruto punches him telling that he's going to protect his brother in the same way Kawaki wants to protect Naruto. Boruto meets Code for the first time and is just that interested that he worships the Osuski. Realizing how much of a threat Code poses to the village, Boruto immediately powers up in his karma form and begins to fight Code. However, he's quickly overpowered as Code is an expert when it comes to using the karma. Code kicks Boruto around in the fight as he explains that Boruto isn't using the true essence of karma, tapping into a thousand years worth of battle experience. He ironically teaches Boruto how to use the karma properly, to where once Boruto is able to tap into the true essence form of karma, Boruto becomes immediately stronger, with even his karma design changing. In the true essence state, Boruto is able to push back Code immensely to the point where they were clashing equally, forcing Code to fight back even harder. Kawaki helps out Boruto in the fight, and after almost hitting Code with a vanishing Rasengan, Boruto decides to go all out. However, Boruto falls to his knees and grabs his chest in incredible pain. Boruto is having a heart attack, which is a side effect from taking the chakra pills to slow down the karma extraction process. Time itself stops as everyone around Boruto stops moving and Boruto sees Momoshiki once again. Momo sees Boruto battling Koei and decides to take over, and we see Boroshiki awaken for the third time. And despite Boruto gaining a new power with the karma, Momoshiki is still on a whole nother level, as he begins to spam massive Rasengan store code and overpowers him with Taijutsu. Naruto eventually comes to Kawaki's rescue but is cornered by Momoshiki. Momo threatens that he's going to kill Naruto as Boruto since he was humiliated by the two of them back in the first arc. A bit poetic in a fucked up way that Momoshiki is going to kill Naruto in the body of his own son as he forms a massive Rasengan for the killing blow. However, Kawaki absorbs the Rasengan and has awakened his karma seal again to save Naruto's life where he begins to fight Momo. Kawaki and Momoshiki have one of the best fights in the series as they display their crazy taijutsu ability but in the end, Boruto wakes up after Momoshiki exhausts too much chakra from the battle. Kawaki tries to end the fight by killing Boruto, but Naruto saves him in the end. He tries to reason to Kawaki that Boruto is his son and that there should be another way to save him, but Kawaki just doesn't care anymore. Momoshiki tried to kill Naruto and Kawaki is going to make him pay for it, which comes at the cost of killing Boruto. Since Naruto can't kill Boruto, Kawaki must be the one who doesn't since there is no other option at this point. Boruto eventually awakens and realizes how much of a mistake it was 
to be taking those chakra pills. While it did work and helped control Momoshiki's power, the side effects were so great that it almost got Naruto killed when Momoshiki took over. Boruto understands that at this point there is no other option and that he has to go through with a last resort plan with Kawaki. Boruto says his bye to Naruto and the rest of his family as he pushes him away using wind style gale palm, where we see just how much resolve Boruto truly has, telling Kawaki that he's the only person that Boruto can ask of since Naruto and Sasuke cannot do so, Boruto sacrifices his life to protect the village and the people he loves by having Kawaki kill him in order to stop Momoshiki. Acknowledging each other as brothers until the end, Boruto and Kawaki did something that only the two of them would understand as they both had the resolve to do what it takes to stop the enemy, even if it means sacrificing one's own life. Just like how Kawaki did when he tried to burn himself when Momoshiki tried to take him away after the battle against Ishiki, Boruto returns the favor. Naruto begins to break down as he witnesses his son die but he understands why Kawaki did it in the first place. He understands that Boruto sees him as family and during a time like this his family needs to be by Kawaki's side. Boruto then awakens despite being killed initially where we find out that Momoshiki has actually revived Boruto using parts of the karma. Momo states that he cannot lose his vessel or else he would die off which is why he healed Boruto in the first place. However this means that Momoshiki cannot resurrect anymore since the Otsutsuki DNA has combined with Boruto's meaning that Momoshiki is stuck inside of Boruto's body forever. And due to Boruto's resolve to die as a shinobi, he manages to stop Momoshiki from resurrecting. With that being said, Boruto is now 100% a pure Osusuki, which means he's now a sacrifice for Code to feed to the Ten Tails. Boruto remembers the prophecy of losing it all and thinks he just went through that event. But Momoshiki assures him that him dying has nothing to do with this prophecy, which is coming very soon. After the battle against Code, Boruto realizes that he doesn't need the chakra pills anymore since he doesn't have to worry about Momoshiki resurrecting. With Boruto becoming a pure Osusuki, he says that he can channel Momoshiki's powers better now, implying that he's become even stronger, but has to keep caution knowing that the risk of Momoshiki awakening through his body is still very imminent. Boruto informs Sarada and Mitsuki that Code was the one who killed Boruto and not Kawaki since he was told not to leak any information about Kawaki killing him. Later on, Sasuke apologizes to Boruto for not being there to stop Momoshiki's rampage since this is his responsibility as his teacher. Kawaki had to take on a painful role of killing his brother where many of the villagers disproved of Kawaki living in Konoha in the first place. Boruto doesn't blame his brother for killing him since he understands the consequences and feels that it's unfair that Kawaki is getting blamed. He knows that only Kawaki would be able to do this since they acknowledge each other as brothers and understand each other's resolve. Once that fight all wraps up, Boruto tries to return Sasuke's headband but his teacher tells him to keep it as a gift. Since it has helped reinforce Boruto's resolve as a ninja and looking into the future, it will only continue to enforce this. Sarada and Mitsuki discuss that they need to get stronger in order to protect Boruto since Mitsuki has become frustrated that someone wants to kill his friend and Sarada has valued Boruto as her best friend once again, impacting their characters for the future. At this point in the story, Boruto and Kawaki have become two sides of a coin. On one hand, Boruto has become incredibly determined to stop the enemy by relying on pride of being a shinobi and his resolve. Whereas on the other side, Kawaki has prioritized Naruto over everyone, where he is willing to kill anybody who poses a threat to Naruto, which even his own brother is not safe from. The two sons of Naruto have their own way of thinking, and so far in the series up to this point, it has been working well. However, after the battle against Code, Kawaki seemed to be angry that Boruto was still alive, despite killing him earlier. Boruto still poses a threat to Naruto, as Momoshiki can awaken if he ever loses consciousness. Team Seven is then tasked to go on another mission, but this time to watch over Ada and Damon, who are going to live inside the village. Hinata sheds a tear in fear that Boruto will not come back, which hints that this is the last time he will ever be home, despite promising that he will come back. As Boruto leaves the house, he is confronted by Momoshiki, who tells him that the day he will lose everything is rapidly approaching. And when that day happens, Boruto will lose the will to live, and not want to exist anymore. And at that point, Momoshiki will continue to live as Boruto through his body, where he will continue continue his goal of harvesting a chakra fruit. With this fate on the line, Boruto is determined that he will stop this prophecy from happening and will decide his own fate. The cohabitation mission begins where Boruto, Kawaki, Ada, and Damon begin as Boruto's thoughts and Momoshiki's thoughts are starting to cross over due to their DNA combining to the point where they can have conversations amongst each other. And after hearing that Ada's love ability is in Shinjutsu from Momoshiki, Boruto suddenly sees a bit of the future where he sees Team 7, Mitsuki, and Kawaki fighting somebody, which shocks Boruto so that he can
can see bits of the future. This immediately goes back to the prophecy that Momoshiki gave to him, which hints at what's to come. Momoshiki then discovers the identity of Ada's love ability, which he doesn't reveal to Boruto right away, where Kawaki suspects that Momoshiki is around. He knows that Momoshiki is up to something, and with him not revealing to Boruto what the identity to Ada's trauma effects is, it shows you that he is plotting something. Knowing this, Kawaki leaves the mission and erases his chakra signature so he doesn't get followed. We find out that Kawaki has come home to talk to Naruto, where he realized that the pain that he was suffering was from the Osusuki, and not the karma itself, after realizing he can use it to protect Naruto. He further explains to Naruto that he despises the Osusuki and that being a ninja will only risk dying early. No matter the choice when it comes to battling the Osusuki, whether ninja or not, you will be killed, which is what Kawaki doesn't want happening to Naruto. Kawaki then explains his goal to destroy all of the Osusuki using his own power, starting with Boruto. And after feeling what it's like to feel loved, Kawaki does not want to lose that one person that showed so much care for him and the biggest person threatening to kill Naruto right now is Boruto, thanks to Momoshiki. Kawaki has reached a point where he is no longer taking any more chances and tells Naruto that he is going to kill Boruto. So he steals both Naruto and Hinata away so Naruto doesn't get hurt in the process of Kawaki accomplishing his goal. And for the first time in the series, Naruto is no longer part of the story anymore. He has been effectively written out of the series and most likely won't be seen for a very long time. Anyways, the village senses that Naruto's chakra has disappeared, which they suspect that Kawaki has something to do with it. Boruto leaves the mission and he runs into Kawaki. Kawaki explains to him that Naruto and Hinata are sealed in the Daikokoden dimension where time has stopped, so they will be completely fine sealed away. And this is where Kawaki is determined to kill Boruto as they begin to battle. Boruto tries to reason with his brother but he realizes he's gone too far. They continue to battle until Saura comes to help back Boruto who tells her to run since Kawaki is unstable right now. She explains her resolve to become Okage which adds further proof that Kawaki doesn't care about being a shinobi as he says that shinobi are just destined to die early. Kawaki then blitzes Saura trying to slash her down but Boruto manages to take the blunt of the blow where he loses his right eye getting the scar that we see in the time skip. The rest of the village catch up and corner Kawaki, but Momoshiki awakens for a few seconds and allow him to escape. After just losing his right eye, Momo tells Boruto that this is just the beginning, and that in a very short order, Boruto will begin to lose everything as the prophecy has started to roll out. Kawaki continues to run from the leaf, where he begins to run low on chakra, and eventually Ada catches up to him. Kawaki starts to explain to Ada that his entire purpose is to protect Naruto, and that he just doesn't care about himself at all. He says they have to kill Momoshiki, or else the village will be destroyed. Destroyed. But Kawaki is having doubts since that means killing the Hokage's son. He knows that nobody in the village has the balls to kill Boruto since it means having everyone turn on them, which would be hard to do. Kawaki is at a crossroads as he looks at Boruto as his brother and he just wishes that he could just kill a complete nobody and not his family in order to stop Momoshiki. No one would care if an outsider died, but everyone would if the Hokage's son did. Which is why Kawaki is struggling with the fact that he has to kill his brother again. After hearing all this, Ada grabs Kawaki and brings him to the sky, where she activates her omnipotence jutsu, and Boruto's prophecy comes into fruition. Those blue eyes will take everything away from you, where Momoshiki is referring to Ada's blue eyes taking everything away from Boruto. With Kawaki wishing that he could just kill a complete stranger instead of his own brother, the story pulls off the greatest plot twist the series has seen so far. As Boruto and Kawaki are the complete opposites, where Boruto had everything growing up, while Kawaki had nothing, Ada's omnipotence jutsu reversed the roles between Boruto and Kawaki in the story. So instead of the village trying to hunt down Kawaki since he sealed away Naruto, after the omnipotence occurred, the village is now actively pursuing Boruto. The prophecy has started as Momoshiki starts to poke at Boruto after losing everything, which confuses him since he doesn't know what's going on. Sarada and Mitsuki eventually catch up to Boruto, where Mitsuki activates his sage mode, saying that Boruto has managed to truly anger him, which confuses Boruto that he's getting attacked. Mitsuki, someone who Boruto considers as his best friend, now wants to kill him, which shows you the predicament Boruto is in. With Boruto being pursued, Kawaki makes Boruto's life even worse by framing Boruto that he was the one who killed Naruto. As even though we know Naruto has been sealed away, the story makes everybody think that Boruto has killed the Hokage. And with Boruto's prophecy finally coming into fruition, this means that not only did Boruto lose his friends, family, and the village, but he also just lost his entire identity. Boruto is no longer Boruto Uzumaki, the son of the Hokage. He is now known as just Boruto, a lonely outsider who bit the hand that fed him, whereas Kawaki is now referred to as Kawaki Uzumaki, the true son of the Hokage who was born and raised in Konoha. What's so genius about this plot twist?
Boris is that Boruto has to find his identity once again, but this time as a shinobi. Boruto struggled to find his identity as the Hokage son, where he struggled to embrace the concepts of being a shinobi, despite being so talented. And now that Boruto is on his own, he has to fight for survival as a shinobi while having everybody in the shinobi world wanting to kill him. Boruto went from killing Momoshiki and teleporting Ishiki away, becoming the hero of Konoha, to becoming the Hokage killer who is currently on the run. And with all of his friends wanting to kill him, Sarada is the only person who is unaffected by the omnipotence, where she unlocks her Mangekyo Sharingan since she knows how badly Boruto has been done. Boruto is completely innocent and has done nothing wrong, which pains Sarada that Boruto has to suffer for something that he didn't do. Sasuke realizes that something was wrong after seeing his daughter unlock the MS. So after after hearing that Sarada wants him to protect Borzo, Sasuke grabs Boruto and takes him out of the village. And despite Sasuke being affected by the omnipotence, he questions why Momoshiki is inside of Boruto and not Kawaki, and why Boruto is wearing Sasuke's headband when Kawaki should be wearing it. As even though he sees Boruto as his enemy, Sasuke believes that he should protect Boruto after witnessing Sarada unlock her Mankiku Sharingan, which is something that hasn't happened before. Momoshiki becomes incredibly frustrated that Boruto hasn't given up despite losing absolutely everything everything and starts to yell at Boruto to give up his body. Sasuke warns that even though he may be helping Boruto out of Sarada's wishes, Boruto must prove himself that he's innocent out of all of this. From all of this happening, this just shows you how mature Boruto is, as after going through so many life and death battles against Momoshiki, Kara, Ishiki, and now Kawaki, Boruto's resolve is incredible. Even though he admits that he's crushed by all of this, Boruto shows no emotion, which shows you just how much resolve Boruto has in his character at this point in the series. Had this happened any earlier in the series where Boruto was prone to taking shortcuts and was lazy, Boruto would have given up living internally and Momoshiki would take over Boruto's life which is what Momoshiki was banking on, that the omnipotence would break Boruto's resolve and force him to give up. Boruto says that he finally understands what Kawaki went through growing up as he was hurt and lonely as a kid, which is the complete opposite of what Boruto went through. Sasuke explains that Naruto was in the same position but was able to pull himself up through his own actions and that if Boruto is truly Naruto's son, he would have to do the same in order to survive. And despite the fate of losing everything finally happening, Boruto doesn't consider this losing everything as he still has the resolve of being a ninja, which he still carries to this day. He takes the blame that he was the one who drove Kawaki this far and understands why Kawaki did what he had to do where he takes responsibility for his own weakness. Boruto says that his brotherhood with Kawaki cannot end with two brothers killing each other, but he has to become more powerful and turn it into a mere quarrel between siblings since that's something that Naruto would do. Eventually Boruto will come back home but for now he must get stronger in order to stop Kawaki and Code who are threatening his life. Not only did Boruto become the villain of his own story while losing his friends, family, and identity with the village, he has a massive target on his back wherever he goes. Boruto is now a rogue shinobi that killed the Hokage and has to fight just to survive. Not only will the Leaf Village try to hunt down and kill Boruto but the entire shinobi world as a matter of fact. With Code still relevant in the story, he wants to kill Boruto instead of Kawaki since he was also affected by the omnipotence, where he has a Ten Tails army ready to kill Boruto with. Boruto Uzumaki isn't a kid who aimed to become Okage. That was Naruto's story. This is simply Boruto's story, a kid who finds his identity when it comes to being a shinobi while in the shadows, and eventually loses it all. While the series has transitioned into Boruto leaving the village, with the series rebranding itself being called Boruto to Blue Vortex, Boruto is coming onto his own as a character. Naruto no longer exists within the series and most likely won't be seen for a very long time, so Boruto is going to have to deal with the consequences of being labeled a villain for the rest of his life. He embraces this challenge, which once again displays the maturity and growth that Boruto went through to become this incredible character. It's unfortunate that many people still view Boruto as this ungrateful brat, knowing the journey that he went through as a shinobi, as he's displayed that he's gutsy and brave, like many great ninja in the past. The mental resolve that he has is incredible as despite losing absolutely everything, he has a smile on his face. As a fan of this series, I wasn't very fond of Boruto's character in the beginning, but as I continued to read the chapters, I became super appreciative of Boruto's development, resolve, and bond with other characters. I would go as far as to say that Boruto is arguably the best written character in the series between him and Kawaki, as the journey he went through and problems he is currently facing will only shape his identity even more. This video wasn't made to convince you that Boruto is a good character. But this video
video was made to explain his overall character as many people still hold so many stupid misconceptions about him. I think Boruto is a great main character for this series and has proven himself that he can carry this burden of being the villain of his own story. And with Boruto 2 Blue Vortex beginning very soon, I only expect more great moments from Boruto Uzumaki. If you get to the end of this video, I would ask you to please subscribe since this is easily the longest video I have ever made. Man, I'm tired bro. <laughs> I took a month off to make this video since many of you guys have been asking me to make a Boruto dissection video and analyze his character. So if this didn't satisfy you, Man, I don't know what will. And I know a lot of people don't like Boruto's character from his actions in the beginning of the series, but I genuinely think that many people never gave Boruto's character a chance in the first place, where he has 100% redeemed himself and has done more than beyond that. I can't wait to see what's in store for Boruto to Blue Vortex once Boruto grows up, as I know Boruto's story will only get better from here on out. So if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe, hit the bell as well, and have a good day. Peace.